the government quite recently announced a reshuffle in the cabinet. And with that, many are hoping for a new beginning and also a promising future. So in this small little episode, we're going to talk a little bit about how the cabinet reshuffle will both impact both you and me from a standpoint of an ex-analyst. So in layman's term, a cabinet reshuffle will enable the government to change people leading certain initiatives within the country. So in layman's term, let us assume that the government of Malaysia is like a small little business, right? And we put person A in charge of doing marketing. That being said, however, maybe person A is a bit shy and he cannot do marketing, but he's really good with his hands and he can actually build things. So right now, let us assume the CEO is the government. What they can do is to change person A's role from marketing into manufacturing. So it's the same thing with regards to the cabinet reshuffle where they put the best people in the best position to lead the country. And to bring us back a couple of years ago, Malaysia at one time was considered the ASEAN Tiger. And at that point in time, with a strong government and with strong ministers, this will enable a vision and also an implementation. Should the implementation be done right, what will happen is the country would progress. So the cabinet reshuffle is very, very important. So right now, let us focus on the cabinet reshuffle. Right now, we will see a couple of new faces, whereby before this, there was 28 ministers. Right now, there is 31 ministers. While before this, there were 27 deputy ministers. And right now, post the reshuffle, there will be 29 deputy ministers. Drilling down to the various ministries, in terms of ministers, there was no changes with regards to the agriculture and also food security. And to recap, this particular ministry looks at the food security in our country. And throughout the year, what has happened is, number one, we could see that there was a skyrocketing in certain food prices. And the second thing is that there were shortages in other food items. All in all, with the same minister, would the next couple of months see a continual increase in food? If so, we should prepare ourselves financially. The next ministry which I focused on, was the Finance and also Economic Affairs Ministry, whereby right now there is a new minister appointed. And with regards to this new appointee, he has been a CEO in multiple companies throughout Malaysia. And he has many, many years being CEO. On top of that, his last posting was the CEO of EPF, whereby we could see relatively attractive returns this past couple of years, despite the economy going up and down globally. So basically, with a new person inside, perhaps there'll be new ideas. And perhaps with these new ideas, our economy may start growing in the future. And as we know, during 2023, there were not much of new FDIs coming into Malaysia. And when there is no new investment in the country, what happened was that there were no new jobs. All in all, what I'm trying to say and what I will do the next couple of months is this. Number one, if global food prices were to continue to increase, what may happen is that our local food prices would also increase. That being said, however, with a small reshuffle in the finance ministry, I'm hoping that there will be new initiative to help the rakyat tackle the next couple of months. So what I'll do is to always keep an eye and to always look out for any opportunities the government may open for the rakyat in the next couple of months.